I am currently driving to Tucson. I stayed near uh, San Diego area last night. I've got about five hours to Tucson. I'm pumped. And as you can see, the scenery behind me is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm just enjoying the drive on an early morning. So I realize I haven't really explained what I'm even doing here on this trip, this research trip. So the goal for the year is to document the early history and also the later history of the American faceting community. So 19 teens, 1920s, 1930s, up to the 50s. And then we're also shooting a documentary that's gonna be probably the later history through the stories of the people that I'm meeting. And so I've been doing research on this project for about two years. You know, looking at the early history, looking at the, the depression, the Dust Bowl, part of my research this last year has been reading The Grapes of Wrath. You know, that's a classic novel that takes place during the Great Depression. And so I'm standing here next to the Colorado River. So this is the barrier between California and Arizona. In The Grapes of Wrath, they specifically mention stopping here because at that time, this is like the early 1930s, it's the last place that they can get water before they drive across the desert. And they have to cross the desert at night because it's so hot that, that basically you'll die. And so they stop here for water. And the area that they went to, which was, you know, the area that I just came from basically, uh, in between Los Angeles and San Diego, this is also the place almost around the exact same time that the American fasting movement really started. The first lapidary club or the first mineral club in California was in Pasadena. Um, that's 1931, I think. And that's almost right around the same area that the Jode family went to in the Grapes of Wrath. So I just thought, as I'm crossing this river and moving my way into Arizona on my way to Tucson, that it would be good to just stop here and collect my thoughts and maybe just give a little context to what all these travel log videos are going to be about here because there's only going to be more gem cutters, more interviews, more machines, more gemstones, and in Tucson, more friends. So let's get on to the show. Oh man, once again, the car is very full stuff. So I went and I got a knife so that I could cut open some of the boxes so that they would uh, not be in the front seat here because it was like blocking my vision. And I was like, okay, I'm good for tonight. I can see, um, I can get some other stuff later. Then someone called me and they're like, can you come over right now and get this fasting machine? And now my front seat's... Okay, so you had this all the way since the 60s. Well Say what? Oh, Whatever. like the, the fact that I'm advertising your shit just like walking around the shows? Yes, yes. <laughs> this is what my office in Tucson looks like. I'm boxing up the laps. I've got the 600, the 1200, all the little labels I just printed at FedEx, and I tape them on here. There's the 100s. And then I put them in a pile on my front seat so that I can take them in to the post office. And I'm in the post office parking lot. Traveling, what a joy. Back seat's empty, front seat's empty. The cart is full. Yes. Oh, snaps. Yes. You need some. 
You have an experienced eye. What do you see? Any any service issues? Not without a loop. I just wanted to get you in my vlog. I'm, taking, I'm, I'm just like. Uh, a lot of the books I've read, that's the total hierarchy district up there. Chain block. Is that it's not a pig technically, and it has like these teeth that are just crazy. I'm doing a travel vlog. So after you lay your grits in, that is that is the catch here. <laughs> the fun begins. It's easy to rub this in. It's very difficult. You know, we can't like you could rent fasting machines and you could ship them, but that doesn't work. You know, they weigh fifty pounds. It's Tucson day five. I'm outside of the Old Pueblo Lapidary Club. There's kind of a party going on inside. It's like a pizza party and there's about to be a talk that I'm gonna film from my buddy Farouk. I gave a talk here yesterday and uh, spent the whole day here. It was a blast just seeing all the faceting people and hearing all the different seminars that are going on. But today it's a special event. It's kind of dinner time and we are having fun. So let's go check it out. So we're all kind of at the mercy of our suppliers. Some of you may think that, okay, Farouk goes and he buys these gemstones inside of Pakistan. So he knows exactly where they come from. That's really an inaccurate notion in the present day. Um, I know some of the mines, they are somewhat bigger companies in Brazil. They are ladies sitting there. So their husbands are working at the mine side. They are cutting stones and yes, some of the younger generation, some of their kids, their daughters and sons, are learning to cut or going to the, the mine site to learn and see what that is um, about. So, A lot of African countries saw what you know the United States and Europe was doing for the, the institution lockdowns, and the governments now sort of like announced a lockdown as, as well in countries like Nigeria and in other African countries. And guess what? Now the data is out, a lot of people were dying of hunger due to the lockdowns than COVID. Why? Uh, everyone is allowed, uh, let's say like in Musa region, to be able to mine near the mines, but they have like a social security number, they have to be registered, and they're allowed to sell a certain amount of carrots per month. Uh, but then this goes also like in terms of value. So you, you can also kind of like trick that, you know, somehow because like, what if this guy, you know, he's getting 50 carrots, but he's worth like, I don't know, Fifty dollars, you know. And what about this guy who has like fifty carats to sell, but is like worth one million? You know, it's kind of like unfair. It's my last morning in Tucson. It's been an awesome week. I've met tons of friends, tons of new friends, and pretty much sold out of all the laps, sold a ton of books, got everybody's pre-orders picked up, and I've got one final day to enjoy Tucson, enjoy the show, 
and see who might show up and say hi. Tomorrow morning I leave and then I'm on my way to Texas, my next stop on my interview journey. So let's get it going. Bye Tucson.